This video is part of Firm Theory Cost. In it, I'll show you how input substitutability affects an input's elasticity of demand. Recall that a firm's labor demand curve can be derived by changing the price of labor, holding the rental rate co constant, and seeing how a cost-minimizing firm responds in its choice of inputs in order to still produce the same quantity. That's what we see in the top two graphs on this slide. For each graph, imagine the firm is initially producing its quantity of 100 units by choosing the cost-minimizing bundle, bundle A. For each graph, then suppose that the wage rate falls, holding the rental rate constant. This reduction in the wage rate to the rental rate ratio is going to flatten out the ISO cost line and for the firm that has to still produce 100 units, we're going to see a substitution from bundle A to bundle B. On both graphs, from A to B, we see the firm using more labor and less capital. This, some, this exercise is the same exercise from the labor demand video that we use to derive a labor demand curve. What I want you to see here is that What's different between these two sets of graphs, those on the left versus those on the right, is that for the graphs on the left, the substitutability of the inputs is lower, which has made the isoquant curvier, which results in a labor demand curve that is steeper or more inelastic. The graph on the right, on the other hand, shows production where input substitutability is higher, so the isoquant is not as curvy, and therefore we see that the labor demand curve is relatively flat or more elastic. Now, I think this makes sense if first you remember a few things. For starters, the curvature, or, or lack thereof, of an isoquant reflects input substitutability. It helps to think of the extremes. For example, if inputs are not at all substitutable for each other, that is, if they are fixed proportion inputs, then the isoquant is so curvy that it's an L shape. On the other hand, if input substitutability is very high, and specifically if inputs can always be substituted for each other at a constant rate, then the inputs are perfect substitute inputs, and the isoquant's not curvy at all, it's a downward sloping line. So what I want you to see is that this graph here on the left has a relatively low input substitutability because the curvature is pretty curvy and more like the L shape than the downward sloping line shape. On the other hand, for the graph on the right, we have a relatively flat isoquant, and so we are closer to the case of perfect substitutes, which means here, the input substitutability is pretty high. One measure of input substitutability is called the elasticity of substitution. Elasticity of substitution is a measure of input substitutability. And so for the graph on the left, elasticity of substitution is low. And for the graph on the right, elasticity of substitution is high. The elasticity of substitution is what is driving the difference in the two labor demand curves. For the graph on the left, we see that when the wage rate rises, the firm doesn't move a lot towards the labor and out of the capital because it can't. The two inputs aren't highly substitutable, so the firm's kind of stuck. It's not going to be able to replace workers with capital as easily and so you just don't see a big response in the quantity of labor demanded to the change in the price of labor. On the other hand, for the graph on the right, where input substitutability is relatively high, we do see a relatively big substitution towards the labor and away from the capital. So we do see a relatively large responsiveness of labor demanded to the change in the price. So to summarize, the lower the elasticity of substitution between inputs, the more inelastic the demand for each input will be.
The higher the elasticity of substitution between inputs, the more elastic the demand for each input will be. This relationship is important to understand for policies such as the minimum wage. Economic theory predicts that if you increase the minimum wage, you will increase unemployment. That's because a higher minimum wage will both increase the quantity of labor that workers want to supply while decreasing the quantity of labor that firms want to demand. How much the quantity of labor demanded falls, therefore, directly impacts how much unemployment rises. What we learn here is that we're not going to see as big of a reduction in the quantity of labor demanded when labor is not easily replaced with capital. We're, we are going to see a big increase in the quantity of labor demanded, and so a bigger increase in, un, in the rise in unemployment in industries where labor and capital are highly substitutable. That's why increases in the minimum wage are going to increase unemployment more in industries where capital and labor are easily substitutable.